Hello! First of all, it's my first day doing the curly girl method. It's a method where if you have like wavy hair, you can get like big curls. Um, so it's kind of like in a wavy period right now, but I'm hoping in a few weeks it's going to be like curly. Um, I look a bit like Hermione Granger right now and this is with no heat or anything like that on my hair, it's just curls. So that's number one to update you on. Number two, I just had my first ever smear test, literally about five minutes ago. I live right next door to the doctor, so that was interesting. That was interesting. Yeah. Just wanted to quickly mention that because I'm probably not going to do a whole video on that, but I uh, just wanted to say that literally it takes two minutes. Uh, they obviously put the thing uh, that opens your vagina up into your vagina. Um, that takes maybe one minute and then the swabbing takes probably ten seconds. So that all happened. I was one of the cases that uh, it was a bit more painful because I have some issues so um, yeah but it was still not that sore it was fine so yeah just want to mention that if you are thinking about getting your smear test because the only reason I went for my smear test is because my friend was like you need to go get your smear test done you just need to do it just do it and book it and um, so if you are a woman that's never had a smear test or you're due for getting another one book it right now that is my Little warning done. Anyway, if you are not <laughs> here for smear test talks and you are here for what the title of the video actually is, then welcome. I am going to be talking today about tips for working with anxiety. So tips on getting a job with anxiety and tips on just generally working with anxiety. I have done another video talking about my experience of working with anxiety. Um, so you can go and watch that if you want to know my background and stuff like that. I'm currently self-employed, but I have been uh, working in bars. I still do work in a bar one day a week, but I've worked in bars, I've worked in charity shops, um, I've worked for, and this is the first time working for myself, and it's very interesting. I will do a whole other video on being self-employed because that comes with its own anxieties and stuff like that. But this is actually one of my most requested videos. People ask a lot, how can you work with anxiety? I, like, And I totally understand that because if I was at the period I was in, a few years ago, watching people that said they had anxiety working, I'd be like, I don't understand how you could have the anxiety that I have, that the severity that I have and work um, and put yourself out there and be open about things and I just didn't really get it um, and so I wanted to talk about a few things that really, really helped me. The first tip I have is to be where you are. Whatever mental state you are in right now, whatever physical state you are in right now, be in that state. So if you are in a position where you have agoraphobia, for example, and you've found it so tough to leave your house, or if you're somebody with social anxiety who finds it really hard to talk to people, they're both situations that are going to make it really tricky to get a job. So of course, I understand why you'd be feeling anxious and feel like there's n never ever a chance you're going to be able to get there. Give yourself a break. I feel like that's one of the main things I would love to go back and say to myself is that things will work out. If you keep pushing and striving and constantly putting yourself out of your comfort zone every single day, every single minute, and the only thing you focus on is getting a job, and that's the only thing you ever think about and it's the only thing you ever work towards, it's going to be a lot harder. And I feel like if you take things a bit more naturally and you take things a bit more slowly and you accept the position that you're in at that moment, it's more likely to happen and I know that might sound idealistic and it might sound unrealistic but that is what happened with me and I was kind of starting to think maybe I'll be ready soon if a perfect job comes up and that's when my friend and a girl I didn't really know at the time said to me uh, we've got a job opening at the bar and it's really relaxed and if you have a panic attack you can leave and it was two minutes from my house and it was just like a perfect setup um, and I was very much accepted into that job with my mental health. It wasn't like you have to leave your mental health at home because obviously I couldn't have done that. So before all that happened, I was working on things like going to the pub. I was working on things like uh, learning to knit. I was working on things that I enjoyed. And that's my next tip is to focus on the things you enjoy for a little while. Um, I know it's as easier said than done because I know that getting a job is so important especially when you're somebody that needs to pay for things, especially when you're somebody that needs to go out and get a job. Not all of us have the luxury of being able to rely on other people for financial help. Um, and also 
just having that focus and having that feeling of being needed is really important. But that will come. Don't force that right now. If you force something like that, it's going to make you feel a lot worse and it's going to make your anxiety feel like you're not on its side. You are the only person that knows what it's like to live with your anxiety disorder and you're the only person that knows how hard it is. Um, and when I realised that, I felt suddenly like I was on my side. Your parents, your partner, your wife, your husband, your friends, none of them know how you feel and none of them know how hard it is for you. And they may, may understand, they may try their best to understand, they may be really empathetic with you, but they don't get it. They don't understand what the physical sensations and the mental situation is like. You're the only person that knows that. And so you need to accept yourself and you need to start doing things that you enjoy. What is something that you've been wanting to do or try for ages, but you're like, yeah, but it's not really gonna add to my career prospects or it's not really something that I should be focusing on right now when I don't have a job or I need to get better first. They were all questions and all things that I had in my head that I couldn't learn to do this, I couldn't learn to knit or I couldn't make YouTube videos or I couldn't do all these things until I had a job, until I was contributing, until people could see that I was trying. And then when I was really, really agoraphobic and I couldn't leave my house, that's when I decided to learn to knit and I taught myself to knit. And that's when I decided to start YouTube videos and I taught myself how to edit and all that kind of stuff. And good things have come out of both of those things, really good things. I'm able to sell my scars for charity, I'm able to make YouTube videos to help other people. Um, but even if nothing comes of it, even if you decide to start crocheting, um, or you decide to start a website for things that you make, I don't know, it could be absolutely anything, it could be going for swimming, it could be running, it could be anything. Something that, that's popped into your head a few times that you're like, I'd really like to try that out, um, but you feel like you shouldn't. That now is the time to start those things, to give yourself back some enjoyment in life. Because I think when we have mental health conditions, I can only speak for having anxiety and OCD, but we kind of, everything has to revolve around that. And everything is focused on getting better. And actually there are things in life that you could enjoy, but you feel guilty when you try and enjoy them, or you feel guilty for doing them because you're not adding towards your goal. Um, but I'm telling you, doing things that have nothing to do with your anxiety and OCD and depression and whatever mental health disorders you suffer with, doing nothing around that helps with your mental health because you're doing something for yourself. The next thing is, what can you do from the comfort of your own home? Maybe you can start a business, maybe you can start a business doing something that you're really good at or you can learn how to be good at something and then start a business with it. Maybe you can start a YouTube channel or a blog, whatever it is, what can you do from your home right now? Maybe you're somebody that's not interested in being self-employed and maybe you're somebody that wants to go out to work and do a job and then come home and that's your home. But what can you do from your comfort zone? Maybe you want to do something like I did, which is I volunteered in a charity shop one day a week and my whole kind of week was focused around getting through that shift. I can't remember what the hours were like. It was probably like 12 till six or something like that. Um, and all of my week was focused on a Tuesday, 12 till 6, and being able to do that. And that really grew my confidence because I learned how to use tills, I learned how to talk to people, I learned that I am capable of doing a six hour shift without having a panic attack. And these little things build up your confidence so much. So what is it? First figuring out your kind of comfort zone and then figuring out what kind of stuff you can do within that comfort zone. So you are doing something, it's something that's new, it's something that might be really scary for you, but you're not throwing yourself in the deep end. Because if we throw ourselves in the deep end, it's more likely that we are going to feel anxious and therefore maybe not want to do it again. My next one is to start small. It really, whatever uh, anxious state you're in right now, I have been at the lowest of the low with anxiety. I felt like there is just never going to be a day that I can leave my house. There's never going to be a day where I feel comfortable in anything. This is the way it's always going to be. I did not see my life ever improving in any way. And then I started doing tiny things. Literally the first things I started to do were meeting my friends on the doorstep of my house. That was a scary prospect for me. And I would do that probably every day. I think I had a friend round at my doorstep probably every day. And whenever I felt like I wanted to go upstairs, I would say, sorry, I need to go, close the door, goodbye. Um, and then eventually that felt like a really comfortable thing to do. And then I would start going into my garden. Um, maybe they're very small steps for people that are very, very, very anxious. But 
apply those same small steps. Are you somebody that has a really good idea for a business that you think you can do really well, but your anxiety is telling you that you can't? What small things can you do towards that goal? Whether it is starting your own business, selling candles, can you make lots of candles and take loads of lovely photographs of them and start a website? What little things can you do? That was a lot, but what little things can you do to start? It doesn't have to be a big thing, it can be literally one very small thing. Even looking into how to make a candle. Start very small. And my last thing is probably the hardest thing to do, but that is to trust the process and to trust yourself. And when your anxiety is screaming at you, it's trying to tell you something. Usually it's trying to say, I don't feel safe in this situation. So maybe you can go a little bit smaller and see how your anxiety feels about that. Um, Trusting the process is a hard thing to do because when you're in a really severe anxiety state, you kind of, it's hard to trust something that you can't see. It's hard to trust something that feels so far away from you. But by trusting, I think one day I'm going to get there. Um, I feel like that does make a difference and I feel like it does help with our subconscious mind. Um, and just trusting yourself and trusting you'll know when you're ready. You'll know when you are more able. You don't have to do this all right now. Um, it's a really tough thing, it's a really tough thing when you see all your friends working and doing jobs and taking it for granted and you see people doing all these things that you really, all you want to be able to do is do those things and it's frustrating and it's awful, I know that feeling so much but it's not going to be like that forever, that is the one thing I know for sure is it's not going to be like that forever, definitely not and you need to take your time and slow down. I know people probably say that to you all the time, but seriously, you need to slow down. You need to take it very back to the beginning and take it in really tiny doses. And whenever you start to feel uncomfortable, own your anxiety and own yourself and say, I don't feel comfortable. I need to revert back. Or I don't feel comfortable. I'm going to go to the step before this one because this one's too much. Um, you are in control of this. And I don't mean that in the way of like, you can control your anxiety. That's definitely not what I mean, 100%. But you are able to control how you react to that, I think. You're able to say, no, my anxiety is saying no to this. I, I need to listen to that. Or actually, I don't know if I am ready right now to get a job. Maybe I can work in a charity shop one day a week. Or maybe I can pretend I have nine to five from home and see how that feels and maybe just write or maybe just uh, blog or whatever it, whatever it is, whatever kind of ideas come to you naturally, go with them because they are they really do have truth to them and they really do have good ideas. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you soon. Bye.